Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. Today there's 26 days to go into your GCSE Maps exam and today we're going to look at the topic of rotations. So we're going to look at one of our transformations which is rotating shapes on grids. So if you've got the revision cards, card number 82 is the rotations card and it'll be quite useful for you as well. In this video I'm going to show you how to rotate shapes on grids and I'm also going to show you how to describe rotations. And there'll be some questions for you to try yourself as well, so feel free to press pause as we go through the video and to try those questions. But let's get started. Okay, so our topic today is rotations. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to do two rotations. So I've got two rotation questions. Normally, I'd get you to pause the video and to try the questions yourself. But with this being rotations, it might actually be easier to print the practice questions and to use those as practice today. But I'm going to get you time to pause and think about what you would do. And then after we do those two rotations, what we've got then is a question where there's been a transformation and we've got to describe it. And I'll get you to try that one yourself. So here we've got a grid and we've got a rectangle A. And we've been asked to rotate A 90 degrees and clockwise about the point 2, negative 1. So the first thing I would do is I'd plot this point 2, negative 1. So that's the centre of rotation there. And what we've been asked to do is to rotate this rectangle 90 degrees anti-clockwise, so anti-clockwise will be that way, anti-clockwise, about that point 2, negative 1. So whenever I'm doing rotation questions, I like to get tracing paper, and you're allowed to have tracing paper in the exam. So if you need tracing paper in your GCSE exam, just put your hand up and ask for it. And then, so I would do get my tracing paper, and I'd put it over the top of the shape like so. Then what I would do is I'd get my pencil, and I would mark on top of the center of rotation. So I've already drawn the center of rotation or plotted it on the page. So then I would mark over that again. And then what I would do is I would trace the rectangle. So draw over the top of the rectangle. Now you'll notice that my tracing paper here is landscape. Whenever I'm putting my tracing paper down on top of the rectangle, what I would do is I'd make sure that it's either landscape or portrait. The reason is that whenever we rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270 degrees, we know where it should be. Okay. So then what we've done is we've traced over the center of rotation and we've traced over the shape. So it should look something like this. Then what I would do is I'd get my pencil and I'd put it on top of the center of rotation and I would rotate the piece of tracing paper 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So it would look something like this whenever we rotate it. So I'd keep my pencil here, holding the tracing paper in that position and it would look something like this. So I'd rotate it and I'd rotate it all the way around until the tracing paper was no longer a landscape and it's now a portrait and you can see then the center of rotation is still where it should be and we can see where the rectangle should move to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push down on top of the tracing paper so it'll leave a little indentation on the page beneath and then we'll draw that rectangle. So let's do that. And that's it. So we rotated A, this rectangle A, 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the point 2, negative 1. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Okay, so this time we've got a grid and we've got a trapezium A, and we've been asked to rotate A 180 degrees about the point negative 1, negative 2. So I want you to just pause now and think how you would go about doing that. Okay, so if we wanted to rotate this trapezium 180 degrees about the point negative 1, negative 2, the first thing I would do is I'd plot the point negative 1, negative 2. So I'd plot that point like so. So that's the center of rotation. And then I would get my tracing paper and I'd put the tracing paper on top of those. Again, making sure that the tracing paper is either landscape or portrait. I've gone for landscape. And we would draw over the center of rotation and over the trapezium. So it would look something like this. Now we've been asked to rotate this 180 degrees. Now it hasn't specified whether clockwise or anti-clockwise, and that's because it doesn't actually matter if you rotate it 180 degrees clockwise, which would be that way, or anti-clockwise, which would be that way, they would land in the same position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our pencil on top of the center of rotation, and we're gonna turn the tracing paper through 180 degrees. So it's landscape, so it's gonna go through 90, so then it'd be portrait, and we'd rotate another 90, so then it'd be landscape again. So it looks something like this. So if we rotated 90 degrees, and now another 90 degrees and that's it so that's where the trapezium would move to so now what i would do is i'd get my pencil and draw on top of it so i'd leave a light indentation on the paper and then we would then draw that shape so let's do that and that's it so we've rotated a 180 degrees about the point negative one negative two and that's where it'd move to and that's it okay so we've carried out two rotation questions now let's have a look at one where you've got to describe a rotation so here we've got the shape A and shape B. They're both quadrilaterals. A is a trapezium and B is a trapezium. And we've been asked to describe fully the single transformation that maps B onto A. So we, so we want to move B onto A. So I want you to pause the video now and see if you can think how you would describe that transformation that maps B onto A. Okay, so let's describe fully the single transformation that maps B onto A. So first of all, let's say it's a rotation. So we say it has been rotated. So it has been rotated. So that's a mark saying it's been rotated. 
And now let's see how many degrees. So to go from B to A, you can see it's been rotated 90 degrees because here, this vertical line here has now become the base. So it's rotated 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And it's gone from B to A. So it's going to be that way, which would be anti-clockwise. So it's been rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. I'm just going to move my tracing paper. So we've got a good start here. We've said that B has been rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise. And then we need to say about, so that we just need one more thing, and that's the center of rotation. One approach, and this is the approach that I would typically use for GCSE questions, and that's used to use trial and error. So just to get tracing paper, to draw over B, to draw over where I think the center of rotation is. So I would maybe try here, or try here, or try here, or try here, and so on. And I would just rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise until it lands on A, and then I know that's the center of rotation. So I would do something like this. So I'd get a piece of tracing paper, like so. I might think, oh, well, is it the origin? Okay, well, let's see if it's the origin. Let's rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. It would land over there. Okay, so it's not the origin. So then what I would do is I would try another point. So I would maybe get my tracing paper, rub out that point, try this one or this one and this one and so on. Until then, I would just find, and it wouldn't take too long. Normally, you get quite good at actually just spotting it. I can see it's going to be here. So then I'd put a line here. So I would try here, this point one, one, and then I would just rotate 90 degrees anti-clockwise. And as you can see, it now lands on top of A. So that must be the center of rotation. So that means that the point 1, 1 is the center of rotation. So 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the point 1, 1. And that's it. And there is another approach you could use, which is where you join up corresponding points and then you do perpendicular bisectors and things like that. Uh, but to be honest, I think for GCSE level, just using that inspection is probably the best approach to use. It's, it's quick and easy. And particularly whenever you're doing perpendicular bisectors in these grids, you might not have enough room or much room to do them. So your lines might be slightly out and so on. So I think that that approach is using trial and error would be the best approach to find that center of rotation. Feel free to look up the approach and decide for yourself, but it's, it's what I would sort of recommend to my students. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to rotate shapes on grids. And we've also talked about how to describe rotations. So making sure that you say it's been rotated, but also the coordinates of the center of rotation. So the point that's been rotated about, and also whether it's been rotated clockwise or anti-clockwise and the degrees. So perhaps the shape A has been rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the point by five and so on. So it's important you know how to describe rotations. So in this video, I hope you find it useful. In the description below is the link to the practice questions. And another topic like rotations, it'd be quite useful to actually print those out if you can to do those questions on the on the practice questions booklet. So I hope you find those useful. If you have found today's video useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tomorrow will be 25 days of going to GCC Maths exam. So feel free to tune in on YouTube at three o'clock and watch that video as well. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.